Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. We're also celebrating the Easter season this Sunday as we're in the 27th chapter of the story. So our Easter greeting we will share, He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Loving God, living God, resurrected Lord, you meet us and greet us in unexpected places and unanticipated circumstances, and you surprise us with the abundance of your love. We ask, Lord, that by the power of your Holy Spirit that you might feed us with your word in this time so that we might follow you this day and always, and that we might trust in your promise that you are with us, that even death cannot separate us from your wonderful and wondrous love. Be with us now, we pray. Amen. We're glad that you all are worshiping with us this Sunday morning. A warm welcome to any guests that we might have. We encourage everyone to let us know that you are here by leaving a message in the comments section or in the chat box here on YouTube. There are a few announcements you want to draw your attention to. Starting up this coming Friday, the 31st, there will be a sunrise study that will be going on here at the church. Uh, Pastor MP will have more information about that, but there's going to be more information online as well about that, about how to gather to be safe together and to, uh, to worship and to grow in our spirit. So that is coming up here on Friday the 31st. Also here at the church on August 16th, we're having a Red Cross blood drive. We talked about that this last week. A reminder for the Red Cross blood drive is that you need to reserve your spots ahead of time, that they do not take walk-in. So please take note of that for this blood drive coming up in a couple of weeks. Finally, and we don't know exactly how it's going to play out long term, uh, but school is starting back up again, and that also means there are needs in our community, in our neighborhood, in our larger world for school supplies. There is currently a school supply drive that is going on here at St. Mark. We have school bus boxes that are in the entryway uh, outside the church office for folks to drop off school supplies, to drop off socks, and to drop off underwear. The times to do that are during church office hours, which are Tuesday and Thursday from 10 to 2, and please call the church office to let us know that you are coming. We want to be a benefit and to be a help to the larger community, but we also want to keep people safe. So anytime you plan or need to be on the church property, please let the church office know so we can schedule you an appointment for that. As we continue with our worship, I invite you to please join in the call to worship. O oh Lord, our God, we praise you. We cried, cried to, you to you for, for help, help, and you, you answered, answered us. You restored our lives. You rescued, rescued us from the grave. Come, let us worship our risen Savior together. Please rise as you are able for our first hymn. I see his loving care 
And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that life is leading through all this stormy blast. A day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives to walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King the hope of all who seek him the help of all who find none other is so loving so good and kind he lives he lives Christ Jesus Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. What a comforting and consoling message it is to know that Jesus lives. But more than that, Jesus listens. And even more than that, God acts in the world. And God has not left us. So confident of God's promise of forgiveness, confident that God is always with us, we please join with me in our unison prayer of confession. Lord God, in the light of your glory, we see the evil we do, the suffering we cause, the good we refuse, and the truth we deny. Heal us of our many sins, wash us in your mercy, and feed us with your grace, so we may follow your way and tell the good news of the gospel. Let us take a time now for silent confession. Amen. In Jesus' hour of need, he was betrayed, he was abandoned, he was denied by Peter three times. And yet, in the light of the resurrection, Jesus asked Peter the question, the same question three times, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? And Peter answered yes to all of these and Jesus said, feed my sheep, tend my sheep, take care of my lambs. And then Jesus said, come and follow me. Resurrection means there is forgiveness for Peter. Resurrection means there is forgiveness for you and for me, for all of us. Resurrection means that death does not have the final word, that sin, sin has lost its sting. So friends, hear and most certainly believe this good news. In Jesus Christ, we all are forgiven. Thanks be to God and amen. And as forgiven people, we are given peace. And so I declare the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us rise as we are able to share that peace with those we have gathered with in person and those with whom we are worshiping online. When we last gathered 
last week. The story was of Jesus who was hanging on a cross. Jesus who was in between two criminals who those people were rightly convicted of their crimes. Jesus who was innocent. And Jesus who still spoke the words from the cross, from the pain that he was going through. Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Now we know that story continues with Jesus breathing his last, with Jesus being taken down from that cross, being placed into a tomb. And we know that we know that for those three days, it felt so dark. It felt so hopeless. Those three days are the hinge of human history between the door between the room that is death and death being final and the room of resurrection and that death does not have the final word, that life wins. And so that door swings open on Easter Sunday. And the story of the women going to the tomb and the tomb being empty, the stone being rolled away about other disciples who are coming, about the angels who make the proclamation, who ask the question, why do you look for the living among the dead? And then Jesus appearing to Mary, appearing to the male disciples, appearing to many other people. We know this story, but the invitation is to hear it anew. In fact, our scripture reading today is from John chapter 21, a chapter we don't oftentimes hear in the church, but it is important to hear the full and whole story of the resurrection of Jesus. And so I invite you with open ears and with a soft heart to listen as God speaks to us from John chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. After these things, Jesus once more showed himself to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the, on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. And Jesus said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, is it the Lord? It is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and he jumped into the lake. But the other disciples came in on the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Peter said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. 
a second time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything and you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very, very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. Jesus said to him to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. May this God's word speak to, my, speak to our hearts, our minds, our spirits. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We've talked a lot about this in the previous weeks, in the previous months, that we are all missing something. We're all missing something right now, and some stuff we're missing completely. Other things just aren't quite the same. We can still have work, but work might be from home in the age of COVID. We can still gather for worship, but we can't gather in person together, the whole church, the whole congregation. We can still shop online, but it's not quite the same. It's different and it's difficult. Our son Samuel misses church, misses church greatly, specifically the thing that he misses the most. The one big thing Sam misses at church is eating. He misses the donuts on Sunday morning. He misses the, the special celebrations and cakes and pies we have here in the church. But the thing that Sam misses the most our potlucks. He misses our Wednesdays together. He misses the spread. So many great things to choose from, and there's always an abundance. There's always enough for seconds or for dessert or for both. When he was little, we used to call him our hungry little caterpillar. And even when for his first birthday party, the, the, the theme of that party was a hungry caterpillar. You remember perhaps this story from Eric Carl, this board book and in the hungry caterpillar that each page he's eating something different a new meal a new snack until he gets bigger and bigger and bigger as i was reading chapter 27 of the story what stood out to me what i had never really noticed before was how much jesus was eating after the resurrection you can't turn a page in that book in the book without seeing Jesus at some kind of meal. Now, during his earthly ministry, there are plenty of stories about Jesus eating and about Jesus feeding and about Jesus at being at table with both disciples, with Pharisees, and also with the crowd you don't really want to hang out with on a regular basis. But there is something about the resurrection, about this story that really seems to work up an appetite. The Gospels don't talk a lot about the resurrection. Uh, most are just, for Matthew and Luke, it's, it's one chapter. For John, it's two. Mark doesn't really address it at all. But we hear in the Gospels, we hear a lot about food. In Luke chapter 24, we're told that after Jesus had showed off the marks in his hand, that he asked for something to eat, and they see him eat a piece of broiled fish. We hear about the Emmaus Road, about how he is invited in for shelter from the road, in to partake in a meal, and as he breaks the bread, the disciples' eyes are open. We hear about it also in Acts chapter 1, verse 4, and Acts chapter 10, verse 41, about Jesus eating in the presence of his disciples after the resurrection. And we hear this story today, the miraculous catch of fish. 
Now, many have given their ideas of why there are so many stories about Jesus eating, about why these things are included, and some have opined that it was to show that Jesus was flesh and bone, that he was not a ghost because ghosts don't eat, and Jesus was hungry. His actual body was one that could be touched, and the resurrected body may be a little different, but it was still hungry. And this is where John chapter 21, it feels a little bit like an addendum, perhaps it has been added later in in the canon. Since the 20th chapter of John, it seems to wrap everything up, but yet 21, chapter 21, it is a story, a new story that begins with hunger. A hunger for food, or a hunger for the familiar, or a hunger for both. And it starts off with Peter saying, I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing in the dark. And some of the other disciples decide to join him. We are not told why. Is it because they are bored? Is it because they are hungry? Is it because it's part of the routine? The text doesn't give us really any clues there. But it was familiar. In times of great turmoil... In times of great transition, it is natural to return to familiar and old habits, both good and bad habits. In this time of COVID, this is perhaps something that is echoing in your life as well. But the question remains, in the light of resurrection, in the light of the good news that death no longer has the power, why are the disciples maybe wasting their time fishing. Why do they go fishing in the dark? It is a mystery, and it is not working. They've been fishing all night long, and they have not caught anything. They have nothing to show. Maybe it's enough for us. Maybe that's part of the story for us this morning, is going back to things that are familiar, that might not be good, but they are comfortable because they are known that going backwards is never going to really move us forward. Now, some of these things going backwards, there might be addictions. They might be drinking too much. They might be prejudices, judging too much. They might be having an attitude of scarcity, thinking we don't have enough, and so we withhold too much. The truth of the resurrection is that we are called to live in its light and also called to accept that light and to bear that light into a world that so desperately needs it. And yet for many of us, for much of the time, we are fishing in the dark. And then we're told just after daybreak, there was someone on the shore. We know it is Jesus. The disciples do not yet recognize it. And this man calls out to them asking, Children, you don't have any fish, do you? says you're doing it wrong. You spent all night with your nets on the wrong side of the boat. Take up your nets. Pick up your nets and cast them on the right side of the boat. Now, up until this point, Scripture apparently says the seven have been fishing naked. Or if you grow up in the Ozark, saying naked. I'm not touching this little factoid in the story at all. Maybe we'll go through it a little bit with a science school class. Depends how, how far they want to go with that. But Peter, Peter looks out, John looks out, and Peter recognizes it, recognized that it is Jesus And Peter, who has this Forrest Gump moment of jumping off of the boat, of of getting in those final hundred yards back to the shoreline. The rest of the disciples follow, follow suit. And on the shore, what Peter discovers, what the disciples discover, is that it is Jesus, and that Jesus already has a meal prepared and waiting for them. There is a charcoal fire. There is broiled fish to be served. There might recall the echoes of the Eucharistic themes of the Last Supper. 
about Jesus serving the disciples or hints of the heavenly wedding banquet that is to come at the completion and fulfillment of time. But right here, right now at the shore, there is broken fish, or there's broken bread, and there's broiled fish. It's time to eat. But there is something else that has to be addressed. There is something else because Peter is hungry, not just for food, but hungry for something more that only God can give. And that's restoration. Because if resurrection does anything, it has to lead to restoration. Restoration to a right relationship with God, but also a right relationship with one another. And so Jesus asked these three questions. Three questions perhaps for the three times that, G- that Peter had denied him in Jesus' hour of need. Peter, do you love me? Of course, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Well, feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, tend my sheep. Peter, do you love me? And Peter is feeling the weight of each question. The third question in a row is almost too much for him to bear. And he says, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus says, Feed my sheep. That is it. That is it. Because resurrection, if it means anything, it is restoration. And we see in Peter that that God needed Peter, not just for the three years of Jesus' public ministry, but God needed Peter not to go fishing in the dark, but God needed Peter to live in the light and to cast his net into the right side of the boat. Resurrection is of the body. We know that from the Easter narratives. We know that that resurrection is of the relationship with Peter and with the other disciples and with us, but Even more than that, it is a call to resurrect our identity as a church and as the body of Christ. And when we have that resurrection, when we have that restoration, then and only then will we hear the words, come and follow me. This was said to the disciples at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. This is said again to Peter in light of the resurrection. Peter was hungry. Jesus was hungry hungry to be hungry is to be human to be hungry is to be alive so the question this morning church is for what do you hunger for what do we ache and are we fishing on the wrong side of the boat fishing in the dark going to the familiar but the not helpful going back to old habits that are destructive going back to old hurts from others that we can't let go of that are eating away at our destructive going back to old harm we have done to others that is just if not more so destructive the danger of this pandemic the danger of of fishing in the dark is that we go back to that which is old and that is not new and can never renew. The wrong side of the boat, the wrong side of God's promise of abundance, the wrong side of history. All of these things are familiar, but none of these things are life. And God calls us in Jesus Christ to live the life that truly is life, to live that life that is abundant, that life that is eternal, if The resurrection means anything. It means reconciliation and restoration, but also abundance in this life because God is taking care of the next. I will always love Eric Carle's book, The Hungry, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, because I read it with my children, because I heard it when I was a child, but also it reminds me that the caterpillar is never meant to stay a caterpillar forever. There is a cocoon. 
there is a hidden promise. There is a transformation that is happening. And there is a beautiful butterfly that is emerging from this tomb with a new energy, a new life. Butterflies get to fly. Butterflies have been transformed into something better. But butterflies have to eat as well. It's the same hunger, but now it is with a new purpose. No longer to simply crawl around, but now to soar. Aren't we hungry, church? Aren't we hungry for more? And the good news is that God never gives us a hunger without also setting a place at a table for us. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness We hear from Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are you when you hunger and thirst for righteousness, for you are going to be filled. Resurrection means life. It means new life. It means restoration. It means transformation. It means a new hunger, but a hunger for the right things. And we will only catch this hope when we start casting our nets on the right side of the boat. May you see Jesus on the shore this morning, the light that is breaking. May you hear him calling us with this welcome message of restoration and resurrection. May we recognize the temporary hunger that is in our stomachs, but also the eternal hunger that is in our spirits for broken bread and for living water. And may we cast our nets on the right side of the boat. And then hear Jesus' familiar words, Come and follow me. Aren't we hungry, church? In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Going to invite you to please rise as you are able. Our affirmation of faith today is from the Heidelberg Catechism. Question number one What is your only comfort in life and in death? That I belong, body and soul, in life and in death, not to myself, but to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ, who at the cost of his own blood has fully paid for all my sins and has completely freed me from the dominion of the devil, that he protects me so well that without the will of my Father in heaven, not a hair can fall from my head. Indeed, that everything must fit his purpose for my salvation. Therefore, by his Holy Spirit, he also assures me of eternal life and makes me wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for him. Jesus calls us to feed his lambs and to tend his sheep. Let us show and share his love through the offering of our lives. Let us pray. Worthy are you, O God, to receive power and wealth, wisdom and might, honor and glory and blessing. Receive these gifts of thanksgiving and praise and use them for your glory and the good of your people. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lamb of God. Amen.
heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you are good to all. Help us to trust in you and to share what we have with a hungry world. We pray for your church universal and ask you to enable us to join with people of all faiths to work for the well-being of all your children. Jesus said, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. We pray for the earth and all the creatures who look to you for their food. May we do our part to follow Jesus in ministries that feed and serve others. We pray for all the people of the world, that wars will cease, that the hungry will be fed, and that refugees will return home in safety and peace. We pray for those who suffer from physical ills, those who are facing surgeries, are hospitalized, or who are recovering from illness or injury. We pray for those who wrestle with you for personal identity and spiritual peace. God, we pray, especially now amidst this ongoing pandemic, for those who are feeling loneliness, anxiety, and fear. For those confined to their homes and separated from family and support. For children, their families, and their teachers who are awaiting the plans for school this fall for those who have lost their source of income, for those who have no home, for those who wonder where their next meal will come from. We pray also, God, for those offering extraordinary everyday kindness and all who are working in essential jobs. O oh God, who hears all of our prayers, you are the one who meets us in the darkness and leads us to abundance and transformation. The one who feeds us and heals us, who calls us and sends us out. To you, O oh God, we silently lift up to you now all the prayers that we hold in our hearts. Gracious God, we join our voices in speaking your praises and blessing your name in this prayer and in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand now and sing, Will you come and follow me? <clears throat> but call your name will you go where you don't know and never be the same will you let my love be shown will you let my name be known will you let my life be grown in you and you yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? 
Will you risk the hostile stare? Should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you? Lord, your summons echo true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps flow. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. And now as you head out into a world, a world that is oftentimes filled with darkness and with grief, a world that oftentimes lifts up old destructive habits. May you go into that world with a resurrected faith. Be it agents of reconciliation and restoration. May you go into the world and follow, follow the resurrected Christ, knowing that God is always with you. And may God's light shine through you. And now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, May it be with you this day, this life, and always. Amen. Jesus calls us in, sends us out, bearing fruit in a world of doubt. Gives us love to tell, bread to share, God Emmanuel everywhere. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, love's all bound. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, love's all bound.